in the rolling bluegrass hills of Kentucky, about 20 miles south of Cincinnati, Ohio, is the town of Walton. By the late 1800s, two railroads ran through Walton, and the Covington-Lexington Pike was the main stagecoach thoroughfare. The Bedinger family owned much of the land along the old Lexington Pike, including the land that the Benton family farm sits on today. Kentucky was a border state during the Civil War, which means it was a slave state that never declared secession from the Union. It is unknown if the Bedingers owned slaves on this land, but the existence of a chain buried deep within an old tree might tell a different story. I've had a few different psychics advise me that they were investing in the house. When they touch it and when they feel it, that they feel sorrow and pain. They have advised me that it could have possibly been used during slavery. In 1934, the farm and the house was purchased by a prominent Walton doctor, Robert E. Ryle. On July 16, 1943, Dr. Ryle's 37-year-old son, William, died on the farm from injuries sustained in a farming accident. Not long after, in February 1944, the farm was sold to the Benton family. Passed away, and J.C. Benton Jr. took over the complete operation to raise Santa Grantruda's cattle and show cattle. The operation continued with the cows up until about the year of 2000. 2000. In the year 2000, J.C. and Rosemary and the children of them decided that they wanted to do something to give back to the general public. They started out with one notebook, one, that notebook that had one school. Now we're up to 2,700 school kids a year and over five to 6,000 just general public members and, and during our pumpkin patch in October. The, the money used is to provide busing to those schools, inner city schools, Title I schools, that may not have the funds to get busing to come here. In the year 2012, JC and his daughter Mary Rose decided that they wanted to do something to continue to give back the education that is much needed in our community to the local public. They decided to go nonprofit. Well, my dad was uh, thinking that, that when they moved out of the farmhouse that it could just sit there, you know. My dad was always thinking, you know, some way to make money for the farm. But first we started out with um, the local high school and we did the haunted house. And it worked out pretty well. And that's before we became nonprofit, and we did that for a few years. And that's when uh, we started noticing things starting to happen in the house because we had gutted the entire house. And I don't think the house liked that really. Because I grew up in that house, so it was just fine. And um, so we went on, and so we used that as our fundraiser to help give back to the um, 501 organization, so we can get kids out here that that can't get busing, the schools that can't get busing to get out here to the farm for our school tours. And how did the paranormal teams get involved? Well then, like I said, you know, we, we started noticing things and so one paranormal team came in and then another one wanted to come in and then it just was like, well, I guess they're having fun, you know, and so it, it, it helped. All of the funding that is generated from the farmhouse uh, being a haunted house and paranormal groups coming in both it is strictly used 100 percent to go back to the general public education about agriculture summer camp that he was referring to, we put benches along the walls in this building. We put benches along the walls in this building, and this is our little show ring here. Uh, there was a child, a family sitting here next to Chaz, who was sitting next to the family. The child was sitting here uh, behind me, or, or about in my vicinity, and he looked up in the hayloft, and, and his mother, you know, asked him what he was looking at. And he pointed up there, and he said, I'm, I'm waving and speaking to that man. Thank you. 
each year thousands of visitors come to Benton Farm to experience farm life and play with the animals. Even we couldn't resist taking a few minutes to feed them and play with them before exploring more of the farm's dark history. We're here approximately 350 feet behind the haunted house. It's approximately built around the 1850s to the 75. We don't have an exact year on when the house uh, that we currently use as a bathroom facility for our agritourism business was built. Around between 50 and 75 we speculate. But if you come on in the basement here with us, you can kind of, you can kind of see what they're referring to. There's different little holding cells, if you would, and I, way back in here, there is another chain that is hanging on the wall and some different metal objects coming down here. Uh, that they have also advised me that it feels of pain and sorrow down here as to maybe that I'm speculating where they have kept uh, their slaves from time to time uh, in this facility. As darkness falls over the farm and the last of the visitors leave for the day, we turn our attention to the paranormal claims and unexplained events witnessed by the Benton family. We was all standing in a group here and uh, all of a sudden I turned and looked to the stairwell, which was not open, and I noticed two figures there. As soon as I screamed and yelled, look, the little girl took a picture and everybody else seen it, and it was of a little girl and a dark shadow of a man bent over it. He chased her up the steps. Then the paranormal group said that the uh, dark figure did not like men. I got poked in the back, standing right here. Then there's two other young men here that got poked in the back. Then all of a sudden, the paranormal seen another figure come down the steps, which we call Pawpaw. He came down and chased away the dark figure. To add on to Chaz's story about the little girl and the charred man being seen on the opposite side of the room at the staircase, after that was seen, the paranormal investigator uh, made a slight turn towards the staircase here and announced that Mr. Benton was present. I didn't turn at, at a quick movement, I didn't turn at a fast pace, I simply just made a slow nod similar to what I'm doing now and looked and sure enough it was Mr. Benton. Now, Mr. Benton was a, was a very skinny man, and he wore a very distinctive hat. Um, the hat was very plain. The clothes were very plain. The face could be made out if you would have known Mr. Benton or Papal that we called him. And we kind of watched as he went, and he went over to the little girl uh, and the charred man and sort of, wouldn't say herded the charred man off, but he sort of, quote, ran him off or, or made him go away. There was one night, me and Cody were in here with the paranormal investigation group. Uh, we came down to the basement. The shadow man, um, as we call him, down here, um, we know he does not like men. We've had things happen to men that have been down here in this basement before. Uh, we've been poked and stuff. Uh, but that night, I was the one doing a little provoking. I just... I got this real strong sensation that I could not breathe. I, I, it felt like uh, there was a weight on my chest. I could not breathe. I had to get out of here. I even told Cody, I said, look, I'm out. I am done. The black thing, it, it was over there again, um, where we've seen it before with other paranormal investigation groups. It, it came across, and then it was gone, and... That's after that, that's when I started having that sensation of not being able to breathe and just, I just felt like I had to get out of the house, which I did. And the black thing that was on the ground, um, was it crawling or moving or how it, did it, it move? It was moving. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to describe. It's, it, I mean, Cody, it's like a, kind of like a hunched over uh, I don't really know how to describe it. I'm almost, if you could... Almost like a monkey. I really. was a little bit um, skeptical about 
this uh, thing they were talking about, this black thing that was on the floor. And I said, okay, here's two pieces of paper, and they both drew this sketch. And I put them together, and I was like, and it was dead on. And after the question was asked, you know, make your presence be known, uh, something to that extent, a pencil or an ink pen, uh, it was... It was an ink pen. It was an ink pen, you're, you're right, Jess, um, was thrown from the door well over here uh, to about the center of the room and just rolled underneath the bed. Just a, a few brief seconds later, um, a plastic bag that was virtually impossible to just magically appear uh, somehow got in here. The house was just cleaned up days prior to that investigation. And we were all just sitting here taking a break from our investigation. Just, you know, hanging out. Um, we were just talking. And something drew me up there. I saw some movement. And I saw it, and as soon as I saw it, I, I told the group, I said, look, there's something up there. And, and they're all like, we didn't see it. I said, it's a man with a hat. I, it's, it's not Papal. It's not, it's not a, a Papal hat. It's almost like a straw hat, a circular straw hat. Uh, it was a big man, big, tall, skinny, uh, but other than that, you couldn't make out. It was just a shadow. We found no evidence of a child dying on the property, but many people have reported encountering the spirit of a child. Darker entities are known to impersonate children. So is this really a child they are seeing or something more sinister? The sun is setting at Benton Farm and it's finally time for us to begin our investigation. Come with us as we explore the mysteries that lie in wait here at the Benton Farmhouse. We begin our investigation in the basement with members of the Benton family. Little girl, are you down here? Hoping they will trigger a response. Something's making a K2 jump. You wanting to say hi to me? Let me know you're here. Make some kind of noise. You can get close to this device in my hand. It'll light up and we'll know that you're standing here or you're with us. We can actually talk to you this way. It's all right. You can come over. It's not going to hurt you. If there's someone here, we need you to get close. We need you to make it flash to red. That way we know we're talking to somebody. And it's not just random. Electromagnetic fields going off. It's all right. You can come on over. It's not going to hurt you. We're not here to hurt you. We're your friends. That's yes. I got that too. If you're here, let us know it. Come on over here. You can communicate with us. It's very strong. Did you smell that? What's it smell like? Mint. Yeah. yeah. Did you smell that? I got a whiff of like spearmint. Yeah. Does anybody have gum? I have no. gum. Yeah, but I've been chewing it the whole time. No, this is something that just, just came. There was a strong smell of mint in the air, but we were never able to identify the source. Make something fall. There's a lot of stuff around here that you could just push over and make something fall. Make some kind of noise. I just heard something. I heard that too. You need to make it a little bit louder. I heard that too. You need to make it a little bit louder. Whoever did that. 
Well, those cameras are loud when they're quiet, ain't they? This no. one is. Yeah. I, you looked exactly when I looked upstairs. Could you make that noise again for us, but make it a little bit louder? Better yet, do something else if you can. Is there somebody down here with us? There is a shadow, and it may be from the light, and something reflecting to the left of the fire of the bricks going up. It is going back and forth. That's my stomach. If anybody heard it. And do you see what I'm talking about there? Crossface over there? Yeah. Hard to see with that camera line. Well, what's it doing? It's kind of nodding his head back I see and forth. it. I see it, Cody, in the corner. Yeah. I see it plain as day. It's just a black figure that's nodding back and forth. And it's, yeah, it's just standing in that corner. This is about the location that we talked to you last time. Once again, we're not here to harm you, and we hope that you wouldn't harm us. The light flashed right here. Of course, off camera. I was pointing that way, but you guys are all... Once again, we're not here to harm you, and we hope that you wouldn't harm us. We just want to speak to you and have your presence confirmed. They're in that corner. and They're, they're, they're staying in that corner, but they are moving. It, it, it's where it's, I'm pointed right now, or yes, right where you were pointing. If there's somebody back there, we ask that you please come out of the shadows. It's all right, you can come out of the shadows. We're not here to hurt you. Just want to talk to you. We have now moved up into what we call the doll room. There's usually a lot of activity in this area of the house. Maybe give us a knock, like last time. Little girl, we're not in the basement, so you don't have to be scared to come out now. You can come out and see us. We're not going to hurt you. Papa, are you strong enough to play checkers now or not? If you are, move one of the red ones, not the black one. You did that. Made Who made that sound? Yeah. Okay, well, I, I it came from that. Uh, it came right there. Oh my God! Who made that sound? Who made that sound? Yeah. Okay, well, I, I it did came not from uh, it came right there. No, it's right here. Yeah. There's a red thing moved. What? There's a red checker moved. Yeah, this one moved out. And that's scoot one of those and see if that's the same sound. It was like a shh. Yeah. yeah. It was Holy sh cow. It came like shush. Right? Like, but that no. wasn't it. It was no. like, it, it, was, it, it sounded like it was. Yeah, it came from the like doorway. It was, you know what? It sounded like a sliding door. Yeah. Something dragging on the ground. Yeah. These? We might be entertaining them. It might be nice if we don't say nothing for at least five minutes. It might make them do something to make us talk more. That is true. Okay. It just did it again. What the hell was it's, that? It's, it's coming this way. It's 
It just did it again. What the hell was it's that? Punch. It's walking on the. See, every same, time we talk, it leaves. Sound. Every time mm -hmm. we talk, it leaves. The same exact sound. Okay, somebody explain to me what that sound was a minute ago. Was it the floor creaking? No. No. He couldn't. Do you want to know what it sounded like to me? It sounded like a sliding door. That's what it sounded like to me. It was like a swoosh. Or something being dragged across the floor. Yeah, that's, that's what it, that's sounded, what it like. sounded like to me, yeah. too. We sit quietly in the doll room for several minutes, hoping to hear another scrape on the floor. I think one of our guest investigators may have been a bit too comfortable. Are you over by the front door? Knock or talk like you did before. I heard you talk. It's all right. You can come in here. We're not going to hurt you. At this point, we lost audio because Mandy fell into the wall as she was chasing whatever it was we just saw down the hallway. Her recorder hit the floor and the batteries popped out. This is what happened. This was the event. We heard the high-pitched voice. After the high-pitched voice, I said, whoever's out there, little girl, it's all right to come in. I'm your friend. I put my hands out just like this because for some reason my hands have been extremely cold. And I waited just a couple minutes, like a minute. All of a sudden, something was running at me. It was white, about this tall, <laughs> running at me. And that's when I jumped. What you are looking at now is an earlier shot of the checkerboard on the floor and the empty table beside it. A white streak just ran through the room and Jared ran out of the room and down the hall. We all followed him, leaving the room empty. We stayed together outside for a few minutes, and when we returned, we discovered something truly incredible and unexplainable. How did the deer thing get on the ground? Yeah, where did that come from? How yeah. did that get on the ground? Where did that come from? Oh, well, all the commotion. My gosh. Nobody what jumped up over about? here, though. Nobody jumped up. Nobody. Where turned. was it before? Jan? In here in this room. It was Shut up. No. no. He's exactly right. Are you kidding me? Chaz, that deer thing was hanging in there. You know what? Hold what up, hold up. It? it wasn't hanging. I had it right here on top of this. It was sitting over there in that room. No, it was what? sitting right here. Was that there? Do we have no. any video? Well, yes. Was no, that was not there. I mean, that was, the that was not was because not, I have... That had to be sitting there. I had that, that's a deer head. No, I had it sitting right here. Not sitting on a yeah, because I brought see, it. Well, I brought it where it moved. Look out, Lord. Look at this. this I brought it in look, today. The to drag use. mark. One of the guys out of work gave it to me to use in the haunted house. You see the drag mark? So yeah. I put it right here. That's where it was laying. Did you just get it recently? I brought it in yesterday. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I brought it in yesterday. I'm going to use it as a prop. We have no explanation for where that deer head came from, but we can say without a doubt it was not sitting on that checkerboard. We returned to the farm for a second night of investigation with just our team present. We loved having the Bentons investigate with us, but we wanted to see what kind of activity we could get without them in the house. I'm the director, therefore I'm doing nothing but holding the camera. That's my function here tonight. In addition to placing two cameras in the doll room, we also placed a camera in the basement and the judge's room. 
it's time to get the lights out and begin this investigation. Okay, so right now we are in the checker boardroom, I guess would be the best way to describe it. It's one of the front rooms of the house. Uh, we were in here last night with the Bentons having um, what appeared to be some pretty good activity. Uh, hearing what some sounded like footsteps or something being drug across the floor out in that hallway. Um, we were seeing movement through this door and the checkerboard over here moved, one of the pieces moved, and then there was also a deer skull that mysteriously appeared on the checkerboard that we still can't figure out how it got there. So hopefully we'll be just as lucky tonight with the team investigation that we have going on right now. So right now the REM pod is detecting a temperature change in that area. Also the uh, blue light which corresponds with the uh, EMF detection is also going off. Although that's been going steady like that now for the last 10 minutes. If there's someone in here who would like to chat, please feel free to make yourself known. Move one of these dolls, make a noise. We've got a checkerboard down here that we can play checkers with you. We'll even let you have the first move. This doll's reaching out trying to kill me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. We decide to go upstairs to the attic where there have been many reports of shadow figures, unexplained noises, and people being scratched. All right, I got the only good seat. <laughs> hey, we can play dodgeball. At least it's warm up here. We have been unable to decipher what this female voice is saying but we know it is not one of us. It sounds like she is saying something about a blue ball, which coincidentally is the color of the ball that Mandy picked up. All right, I got the only good seat. <laughs> hey, we can play dodgeball. At least it's warm up here. If anyone wants to see, they can take it. No, they don't. They watch out to get whacked in the head with a sucker. <laughs> Oh, that's such a... oh, here's a light. Okay, so right about where Kim is standing right now, um, we had, she was probably 15 or 16 at the time, um, Aubrey, one of the family members, cousins or something for the Bentons, I can't remember which, but she was up here and um, we weren't really... We weren't really doing anything. We were just kind of standing up here running an EVP session and she ended up getting scratched on her back. So, don't know what that was about. Supposedly there's um, a guy they called Old Pervert up here. Let's do a spirit box session. Okay. Alright, so we're going to try a spirit box session up here in the attic. Supposedly there's some old pervert up here. I don't know. There's no really factual backstory. It's all a lot of legends and stuff like that, but we have gotten activity up here before, so we're going to see if we can get any kind of communication. Last time I used this up here, the word devil came through, so I guess we'll find out. This little annoying box that I have in my hand, you can use it to communicate through. But if you're going to talk in it, you got to speak clearly so that we know it's you and not some random word that's coming across a radio station that we're picking up. Are you 
talk to yourself? Really? No. Yeah, who was that? I was that one of you? I heard it. I thought it came from the I box. thought it was you. No, it was a man's voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that, that was one of you guys over there. Weird stuff because I just turned off my recorder. Mine's on. Mine's on. I, don't know. I heard it, but I thought it was Ben. No, not at all. Okay, I thought so. I you messing with something. I thought you were talking to yourself. No, I was turning off my recorder. Okay, that was weird. Okay, so we just heard a male voice up here. Not through this. Not through that. Um... Thought it was Ben, but apparently he wasn't actually talking to himself this time. Hopefully, either my camera or one of the recorders we have up here picked it up. I don't know, so we'll have to find out later in evidence review. I hope we heard that on the recorder. I hope so, too. Yours should have picked it up. It You're close to it. But that spirit box was going on. Unfortunately, none of our recorders picked up the voice that we all heard with our own ears. You speak again? We decide to give the spirit box another try. All right, let's try this once again. Oops, that was me. Is there anyone up here? There's someone up here. Can you try to use this to communicate with us? Come on, I know you know how to use this. I've heard it before. Come on, I know you know how to use this. I've heard it before. Come on, I know you know how to use this. I've heard it before. Tell us one of our names and we'll go back downstairs. Feel like something might be brushing my hair in the bottom of my ear. Like, see, so I felt like something was messing my ear. Too. Okay, I thought I was thinking there were flies up here, but like, but I, nothing. It didn't feel like a fly. It felt like the bottom of my earlobe was kind of like. Yeah, that's. It being, felt like where my earring was. Yeah, exactly. Like right at the bottom of the lobe, kind of like a like a. Well, my earrings are at the top, but. Oh, it's just well, like for me, a it was bottom of Yeah, me too. And, then, and then as soon as I started worrying about it, then it felt like something brushed my hair. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. If you don't tell us who's in here, tell us your name. I keep seeing stuff over there, too. Yeah, it's like... I, I can see the light in this window much more because I'm focused on you. Yeah. So it's out of the corner of my eyes. Alright, I'm shutting this off. You can see Is the rim pod going off? I don't hear anything. But my arm keeps still it feels like I'm being touched, but I don't know if there's anything flying around up here. Can you push me? Scratch my face. 
knock her hat? You knocked my hat off. Yeah, We're that's what. Fighting. Exactly, that's one of her biggest pet peeves. Um, others, you guess have uh, what? what? Like the sun is light over there. Over where? Behind me. Like right in here, in a little dot of light. Oh, in the I corner. Feel on the back wall. Up there. Yeah. Now, last time we were up here, we were here in movement back here. Could be rodentals. True. Mr. and Mrs. What Benny. What the hell was that? What? What? Mr. and Mrs. What Benny. What the hell was that? What? What? We have absolutely no idea what this anomaly is. We have debunked this as not being an insect. We have considered the thought that it might be a feather, but as you will see, we searched the entire attic for feathers. If there was one feather, there would be several. It is also transparent. You can clearly see the wire behind it. Be careful. Oh, careful. Right. So, you were asking where it moved? Because you and the other one didn't see it. It moved from like right about here and it went in a downward motion like that. Yeah, so it's got to be. It went, it went like that. There's no way. If it was a feather, it would have fallen straight. Yeah, or this literally went slanted. There's no way it was like this bag no, or something. No, it's not that bag. There's nothing under that table. And no, because it it didn't go straight down. No, I mean, it kind of went, went catty corner, it, like corner to like corner. Like it was like this. Yeah. And it was really. It wasn't fast. It wasn't fast, and it wasn't slow, slow. Okay, so there's nothing on this table here, which... There's nothing that would have made that... Could have possibly... I don't know. We don't see anything over here either. So it could have been, like, the pink. Mm -mm. No. no. Well, and you said it was further back, right? So it would be more... It literally looked area. like it was standing right where Ben was at. Yep. It was okay, so here. we... Don't know what that was. Could have been a feather, could have been, we don't know, because we can't find anything on the floor, under the boards, underneath this desk here. So hopefully when we go back and put it on a big screen nothing. and kind of pause it. I feel like something touched my hair again. Feathers. <laughs> I don't know, I don't cobwebs, I don't see any cobwebs. Okay, that was a string. <laughs> I mean, there's no... That was, a, that was a string. That is, yeah, that's a big string. They <sighs> like you, Ben. I don't know. Do you see, there are no feathers anywhere around no, here. No, nothing. So, nothing so like that. I find it hard to believe that just one single feather, when there's nothing else on the floor, would have floated down. Okay, but what else do you think it will, I mean? I, 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 don't, I don't have know. any explanation for that. And I really would like to see it in slow motion Yeah. on the camera. I mean, it could have been anything. We just don't know. Could it be paranormal? Sure. After searching the attic for feathers, Laura, Kim, and Amy left the house, leaving Ben and Mandy alone. They decided to go into the basement and look for the charred man. We're in the basement looking for the charred man, possibly the little girl. Or Papal Benton. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit creeped out right now. Yeah, me too. And I'm hearing what sounds like footsteps above us. We're the only people in the house. Laura, Kim, and Amy went to Burger King. So we're literally the only ones in the house and it sounds like there are footsteps going, walking above us. So um, we're gonna hang out down here for another minute or two and then maybe go sit upstairs and just see what happens. My heart is absolutely pounding right now. It's freezing down here. And we did a court. Do you know how, do you know how the millimeter on? I do. Do you remember what I it was it saying off. before? It says it's 60.9, so I mean, it hasn't changed much. Let me see if it's different by this door. There's a different kind of 
scared to get near this door. I know, right? Because it's... <laughs> oh, oh. I'm good. It's good. It gets real dark over there, too. I'm like, yeah. the light from the camera, is, it, it disappears when you get over there. Okay, you can say whatever you want. You can say it's camera hype, whatever, but there's something on those stairs right now because it keeps peeking around the corner and I'm hoping that the camera is picking something up. I can't tell if it is or not, but we're physically seeing it with our own eyes and we definitely, definitely can feel something. Okay, so the other three just came back in and the energy down here is completely changed. Yeah. It's not heavy anymore. The goosebumps are gone. I can't see, it's making me dizzy. Ooh. There's a neat little gadget in the corner of the room. Can you make that light up? It might be hard for you to hear, but after Kim laughs, you can hear a child giggle. This is the same child we and many other investigators have heard in this house on multiple occasions. <laughs> Apparently, she likes to laugh at our stupid jokes. Situated in the rolling hills of the bluegrass state of Kentucky sits a family-owned farm. A farm steeped in rich history and a dark past. Slavery, civil war, and untimely deaths. Have the spirits of the dead stayed around to tell their tales? As we close this chapter on the Benton Farmhouse investigation, None of us are leaving disappointed. Though we still don't know the identities of the spirits, we do believe that this farmhouse is haunted. Come on, Mandy, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> that was about as douchey as it gets. <laughs> was that bad? That was awesome. Oh.